Hi, Mary. Hello, Amanda. Hi, how are you? I'm well, thanks. Good. If everyone can just make sure that they're muted and that their videos are off. If, if you're waving at me, I shouldn't. There, hi guys, how are you? Good. Good. All right, get rid of the video. Yeah, and if you can mute yourself too, that'd be great. We're just going to wait another few minutes. We still have some people jumping on and uh, in the waiting room, so we'll wait another minute or two. If all. If you put your settings to gallery view, um, anybody who's on the call should be down the right hand side and I will be uh, on the big screen in the middle. But when, the, when there's more than just myself on, if you, put it to, um, if you put it to gallery view, you should be able to see all of our screens. And the thing beside you. In the thing beside you. So everyone can just make sure that they mute uh, their microphones. Videos off. Still have some people coming in. We'll just wait another minute or two. Okay, we are gonna get started. Uh, it is 7.32, so I think most of our coaches are probably on. So welcome to our second Coaches Corner. Um, thank you everybody for joining us. We have a huge turnout again today, so uh, we are very excited about that. Uh, we had some great feedback from our first webinar that we did last week. For those of you who submitted questions either to myself or in the chat or after the fact, Please continue to watch our Skate Ontario website. We're going to be putting up a frequently asked questions um, section where we are going to answer all the questions that come in during the webinars. 
So keep an eye on that. We're working on getting that posted shortly. I just wanted to let everybody know that we're recording the meeting so that we can post it after for anybody who wasn't able to join us today. Wanted to give everyone a reminder about the Brock uh, University Skate Ontario Coaches Questionnaire. So this is a research study that's being completed in conjunction with Brock University. It's an important study that's going to help us at Skate Ontario learn more about our coaching community and what your needs are. The deadline to respond to the survey is May 8th, so everyone should have received an email link with the questionnaire. If you didn't, you can contact us and we can get that to you, uh, but we would really, really appreciate it if you would take the time and complete that survey. I wanted to bring to your attention that Skate, on uh, Skate Canada has updated the um, rule of two information just to provide a little more clarity on their website. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you just to walk you through exactly where that information can be found because we're going to be talking a lot today about uh, virtual learning opportunities for our skaters. This is an important uh, piece of information. So I'm going to here. So if we go to the Skate Ontario homepage and you click at the top on Safe Sport, and if we just scroll down here, and right here is a tab for Rule of Two. If we click on that, uh, there is a lot of updated information. Um, on the rule of two. There's also the infographic that we accessed last week on our webinar from the Coaches Association of Canada site. Um, this is now available on the Skate Canada site. So I encourage you guys to visit um, this page and just have a look at the updated information. It has really cleared, um, cleared up a few things. Okay, uh, we understand the challenges of being off the ice right now. And while none of us have a clear picture how long we're going to be off for, unfortunately, um, we do know that many of you are wanting to maintain connection with your skaters, uh, which is awesome, uh, while they're away from the arena. We know that across the province and even the country, we can expect to see some longer term impacts that COVID-19 will have on skaters, skaters possibly opting out, skaters who are unable to return for financial reasons. Um, we wanted to have a webinar tonight to focus on the short term. So tonight's is about short term and give coaches different ideas of how they can uh, stay connected with their skaters, uh, keep their skaters motivated and engaged until they can come back on the ice. So this is a huge piece of trying to keep our skaters engaged uh, so that when it is time to go back, uh, that they're ready to go and keen to get back on the ice. Uh, we also wanted to talk about what this break mean, means for different types of skaters. So for some, this break kind of fell at a time where it might fit into their regular schedule. Maybe they skate September to March and they're usually off now anyways. But for others and for a lot of our skaters, they're missing crucial time during their training season uh, where there's often new skill development happening, new programs, new choreography. How they're handling this time and what coaches can do to help them through this time is very important. We decided to bring two experienced Skate Ontario coaches on to hear how they are managing and connecting with their skaters during this time. I want to welcome Allison and Tracy. Allison Perkis has been coaching for 20 years based in Brantford. Uh, While well, she's the coach of Evelyn Walsh and Trent Michaud, our national silver medalist in pairs, as well as our national novice and junior pair gold medalist, Allison also coaches skaters from the star two to the novice level in singles as well. She has a broad level of experience with skaters at all ages and stages of development. Our other guest is Tracy Wayman, been coaching for 25 years, based out of Richmond Hill. Uh, she's the coach of Roman, uh, who is our current men's national champion. And like Allison, she coaches and oversees skaters at all levels um, at her club, which is YRSA, including skaters at the star two, three, and four level. So thank you both very much for joining us today. I know it's been great chatting with you guys over the last couple of days. Um, and I'm sure that you guys are going to have awesome information for our coaching community tonight. So welcome, ladies. Um, I'm hoping the coaches can all see all three of us now. So if there's any issues, we do have our chat box down here at the bottom. And someone is 
monitoring the chat box, not us. So someone else is. So please feel free to put any um, anything in there if you're having any issues. So you should all be able to see the three of us now. Um, what we want to start talking about is the break. So how to approach this time off the ice. Um, Allison, when we were talking over the last couple of days, you were telling us that when you skated, you always had some time off in April after the competition season. So this is a little bit like that in many ways. So how is this time off the ice during COVID the same and how is it different? Um, and how is it for star skaters versus your higher level skaters? Uh, well, I, I'm not actually sure that any of it is the same. None of us have ever been through anything like this before, but um, I certainly grew up um, skating and had a break in April. Um, but we knew, we knew the time frame, so there wasn't that sort of anxiety about when are we coming back. And we've really embraced it as, you know, a dive in and finish with um, our school obligations and plan a family vacation around that time and really just relax and have downtime to heal any nagging injuries or just catch up on everyday kid life kind of stuff. Um, obviously this is significantly different and um, I think that there's a lot of planning uh, that goes into the high performance kids um, throughout the whole season and that they are at least from my perspective, handling it a little bit better than uh, the don't, they don't engage in planning meetings. They just arrive at the arena and skate and have a good time. And so now that that's not happening and they're having to come up with schedules in different ways, um, that's been a bit of a challenge, but they're starting to roll into it now. So hopefully it's not for too much longer. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely, I think your point of the uncertainty of our return date is the big piece, right? So yeah. it's not like they know they have three or four weeks off and you can plan accordingly. Um, the uncertainty is definitely the difficult piece here for sure. Uh, Tracy, how are your skaters managing from managing this time away from the ice? Uh, well, I, I oversee 45 skaters right now from the age of four years old to 20 years old. So it's, it's a huge span. The little ones that now that I've started this whole Zoom program, they seem to just be excited, see their friends get together. Um, I, I, I definitely don't talk to them as much about the situation, but that it's just, hey, we're doing a class, look at your friends are doing it and, and keep them with us. The higher end is a different um, story. And so everybody some are handling it better than others, but I have to say no matter, even the strongest people are struggling with this. And it's basically the unknown, which is crazy right now. And to try to motivate yourself every day. So I, I really, um, I think that's tough. I find even my strongest skaters generally can do two to three days and feel very motivated and then have a down day. Mm -hmm. Work through it, keep going, go another two to three days, and then another down day. Mm -hmm. um, do you find that this, the skaters are struggling with a new schedule with school? Yes. So balancing the school yes. and their new skating schedule. Yeah, I actually have had um, the biggest, almost mild breakdowns have been over school. And it's just, um, everything is new to everybody and they're having to do things online and they think that they should be understanding things and they're not and they're panicking and it's with everything, right? So as I said, I, I, I do teach um, kids from like four years old up to 20 and the higher ones, I meet with them on Mondays to their level like I usually go down maybe three skaters per class and that's when we go over everything we see how the schedule that we made from the week before worked 
if there's any injuries, is anything acting up, and then we readjust uh, the schedule. I mean, the thing is, is right now, um, we can only focus on the things we can do mm -hmm. and really try not to focus on the things we can't. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I wanted to mention too, in terms of speaking with uh, your skaters parents. So helping the skaters parents have a better understanding in terms of what is happening. And I know just like we don't, you guys as coaches don't necessarily have all the answers that they want, right? We don't have answers for them all the time, but just ensuring that the uh, parents are engaged and that they have an idea of where our heads as coaches are at and you know, anything that you can't answer, you can come to us. And if there's something that we can answer, but again, a lot of the times we don't have the answers that they want. Um, but can you speak at all to any sort of parent meetings that you've held? Um, so I've tried to engage some of the younger, uh, the star skate parents. I am lucky that I have some parents who are teachers. Um, I've had one who's an excellent music teacher come and do a music appreciation class with my like star two to fives. And it went really, really well. She was very engaged with the kids and they, it was pretty interactive. So like I could tell they weren't getting lost in boredom just talking about their music. They were really, really good. Um, and I've had a few that are um, gym teachers who I just asked in their own homes to do um, like an awareness balance coordination exercise on the off days that they don't see me. Mm -hmm. So they've been having a good time with their parents doing circuits and little exercises that are gonna improve all of their agility just um in the interim and i i would encourage you to if you can make them your like the parents of those young kids more like your assistant coaches right now because they can be in contact with them right they if we send them a video we're not covered by insurance for them to do that stuff but they're with their parents and you have somebody who's qualified and capable then really give them some some rain there and ask them for that help because it's going to keep the parent and the skater engaged in getting them ready to come back on the ice. Absolutely. Uh, Tracy, have you had any conversations? I'm sure you've had lots, but uh, conversations with parents, how are they holding up? Well, I think with the younger ones, it's really important that uh, they are involved. So I encourage all the parents to join the classes, especially the very little ones. I want them there. They can also help out because if you have um, like a five, six year old and the parents completely removed and you say, point your toes or flex or the, it's sometimes, you know, they're watching, but they're not seeing whoever's conducting the class and the parents can actually come look on the screen and whoever's doing that class, put them in that position. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it keeps everybody. I know that the parents are so appreciative of these classes we're doing. And um, so I really do encourage that the parents are involved. And I have done some, also some meetings, my initial meetings before I started this with the higher end, was a meeting with the parent, the skater, and myself saying what we're going to do. So it was basically, you know, you do your annual meetings. This was, I went through with all of the higher end, the younger ones I've, I've spoken to, you know, through chatting and mm -hmm. see them on the video, but, but that, that higher one, I did do an individual meeting with the parent, the skater, and myself just outlining what the plans are yep. and then trying to come up with the schedule. So what I basically did is I told everyone, gave them an idea what I would like to simulate how they used to train and then asked them to send me a schedule around their schoolwork and then right. we adjusted that way. Awesome. Um, Dave Islam also um, echoed your comments, Tracy, about how in his experience, he is finding that parents are just so grateful that you're, pro that they're, we're providing some structure to their skaters at this time. So I think that that's probably a general consensus across the board, uh, which is awesome. So, okay, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about connecting and engaging with the skaters. So Allison, how are you finding the best way is to interact uh, with your skaters while they aren't on the ice? 
Um, are you doing Zoom? Are you able to connect with your skaters um, of all levels, star skate and competitive? Uh, is there another format you're using, FaceTime? Uh, which is your favorite and what seems to be working the best? Uh, for the biggest groups, um, I'm using Zoom. Um, I, it's been working great for us. Mm -hmm. I see my star skater, my star two to fives on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And I see the competitive kids every day. Um, a lot of that uh, with the higher end is uh, FaceTime. I know they stay connected through a group chat, um, but they, they also use Zoom pretty easily. We've also been able to connect um, with lots of different uh, coaches and classes all over the world, really. Um, so we've been really fortunate that um, some really great coaches, Ravi, um, Christy Crawl, Tom Z, um, Jeff Buttle even, uh, Paul Parkinson and Andrew Evans have been doing jump classes. So they can, I send them their links and they jump into some other classes and then they tell me all about it. And it's a really good um, check-in point for them that if they're not doing the class necessarily with me that day, they still have a class and will engage with me about it afterwards. Absolutely. And there are so many coaches out there doing so many great things. And the best thing we can do right now for our skaters is keeping them busy. So yeah. any opportunity they have um, to join into any of those sort of classes is awesome. Um, Tracy, how are you connecting with your skaters? Do you have a preference? Are you using Zoom? Uh, have you found that your skaters are struggling to balance? We talked a little bit about the school balance. Um, are they having time to fit everything in, the training that you want them to do in their school? Uh, yeah, I, I'm connecting mainly um, with Zoom only. And so, as I said, I have sort of four groups. Um, the Monday, I break it down even more. So that's a, that's a time that we talk and we see, is the schedule too much? Or maybe somebody's knee is starting to hurt a little bit. Then I, I adjust those schedules and then they, they will rewrite them. Um, and then at the very, very high end, it, 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 it's sometimes uh, more not on Zoom, but just connecting uh, with like an elite skater and seeing really how they're doing and what, how their motivation is. Um, so yeah, that's the way that I've been communicating um, is basically only on Zoom and, and exactly what um, Allison said, like I knew nothing about Zoom. And so I have to say thank you. Uh, I mean, Ravi was like, I was on the phone with him every day and he had these amazing ideas and, and then also, uh, same as what Allison, if he was doing something that one of my skaters were interested, then they joined his class. So, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of information out there and there's a lot of coaches that are coming up with amazing ideas. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's definitely, um, it, it was, it was something that I had to learn. I'd never used Zoom before. And um, there are people out there to really help you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think those um, non-physical contacts that you talked about, Tracy, that you do on Mondays, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that now too. But I think those check-ins that you have with the skaters, that maybe it's not a jump class or a spin class, you're just how are you doing, right? How are the skaters doing? Um, how are they managing? You know, I think the whole uncertainty to this whole time is challenging for them. So I think those are equally as important. Just the check-ins where, you know, you're checking in with them as kids, you know, not necessarily skaters. Yeah, so I think that that's awesome that you guys are doing that. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about some ideas for our coaches on, you know, something that's not necessarily a jump class or uh, skating related. Um, so both Tracy and Allison, when it comes to what to do to engage skaters remotely, um, before we get into the physical training ideas, we'd love for you guys to share some ideas with us um, on what you're doing that isn't necessarily skating related. So it could be skating related, but it might not be their own jump class or their own spin class. Um, so, or focused on areas other than the usual aspects of on ice and off ice training. So Allison, did you want to start? Uh, sure. Um, so we've had like a little um, chat with our 
group about recipes they've tried that week, uh, recommendations like a thumbs up or a big thumbs down. Um, and there have been some misses. So um, those are actually the funnier um, conversations that they've had. Um, they've also done some um, really great dance classes. Uh, we've had some judges do um, like a GOE clinic and a um, component mark skating skills clinic um, over Zoom, which was excellent. They had lots of feedback for that. Um, and it got them to, it, it gave them the opportunity to watch skating and watch it from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. um, my younger ones have done, uh, I put them into little groups and they do TikToks together as a, like an, ex a, an expression exercise. Um, they've also done a, I've used Evelyn and Trent to come on and do like a little guest chat with them. And they talked about component marks with the star two to fives. So then they got a little homework session afterwards where they had to identify the five components and come up with examples of uh, transitions. And they were allowed to either write them out and send it to me or do a video or uh, just to be as creative as they wanted to be. And I got crazy submissions all over the place and it was really fun. The kids were really engaged um, and all of the parents said, thank you letters and that this was the most interesting homework the kids had gotten all week. Um, and I, my intent was not to give them more homework. It was just so that they could connect with each other. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Awesome. You and I to... think, go ahead, Tracy. Um, yeah, I, I'm trying to get as creative as possible. Uh, the thing that I'm actually going to try in the future is most of um, our skaters, they play some kind of instrument. So I want to actually try to get groups together and whatever, it, whatever instrument they play, and I don't know, I mean, I'm still working on it and maybe try to actually do a song together, have someone sing. And so that's something I'm working um, on. And uh, other things I've done is uh, I, I like uh, the skaters to wear their skates, um, depending on the level, let's say at least um, an hour a day, obviously like the four to six year olds, like twice a week for 30 minutes is fine. Um, and I've, I've asked everyone that they can wear their skates at any time and to send a creative picture of them wearing their skates while doing something else. So I got some absolutely great, funny, entertaining, everybody was into it pictures. Uh, what I was going to do tomorrow was ask the younger ones to draw a picture of themselves and what, what their favorite thing about skating and draw themselves doing that. That's awesome. So that's, I think it's just, um, everybody, Allison has amazing ideas. All these coaches have these great ideas and it's great to share because if we can keep these skaters interested and engaged, um, it, it's, it's excellent. I agree. And I think it's also a very good opportunity. So you were mentioning, you know, your star two, threes and fours did a program compo component, um, session. So I think it's a great opportunity for these skaters to take this time to learn new things as well, right? Um, learn some things that are going to help enhance their skating for sure. Um, so yeah, I think these non-physical uh, experiences that you can have with the skaters are equally as important as their jump classes. Um, and I know that from the sounds of it, your kids are having fun with it too. So that's awesome. Uh, we are going to talk about the um, physical off-ice training. So when it comes to off-ice training, uh, can you both take us through your approach to this for skaters of all levels? Um, so an example of what kind of training you're doing with your star skaters, your elite skaters, so often that sort of thing. Um, I'll talk about the star skaters, I think, um, because I see them three times a week 
uh, and I change up what they do every time so they're not expecting a, a uh, jump class. I have quite a few little boys right now, so if I told them we were doing stretch class beforehand, I think their parents would probably have to bribe them to be on the call. <laughs> um, so we try to mix in a bunch of different things. They start with like an off-ice warm-up. They do a little bit of jumping. Um, some days, uh, I stole this trick from my friend Keegan in BC, um, any of the kids that don't tie their own skates, um, he has them sit in a chair and point the video at their feet and then watches them tie their skates. So I have three little ones that, um, still don't tie their skates. So they're working on that while... Um, the other kids are doing their exercises that are in their skates, which is mostly like walking and bending um, and working on pointing their toe in a landing position, all assisted with the wall or a chair. Um, some days they do yoga. Um, some days they do a bit of a dance class. Uh, so it's really just changing it up for them. Um, the one thing I will say has really helped is having the infusion of some of the older kids, not necessarily Evelyn and Trent, but even a skater, a novice skater that's just higher on their, you know, two sessions higher than them or something come in to demonstrate or to offer their encouragement or participate somehow. That's just a different face and somebody that they're really looking to impress. And uh, it's been fun for those kids to also, um, be part of the process so yeah. and I think it's a great opportunity to use and I know Tracy you said as well you were using some of your senior skaters um, or more advanced skaters to teach some of the classes right the kids uh, you know it's a great opportunity to help engage them as well by having them involved in the teaching also uh, Tracy do you want to talk to us about your schedule for your skaters and what it is that they're doing so um, maybe I'll go then a little bit of the more higher end which it's it's a, little, it's a little bit specific for each one, but overall, um, generally they do 30 minutes of stretching each day. They do 30 minutes of core each day. And then they do their cardio at least three times a week. Now saying that if somebody, like I, I'm trying to um, get across to to my skaters that this is a time that you can really, really work off the ice on your weaknesses. And um, you have the time to do that. So if I have somebody that needs a lot of flexibility work, I might increase that stretch time with them. If cardio is a weakness, I might increase that time. But it's about an hour and a half of off ice workout each day. And then on top of that, I try to simulate uh, like a day of practice so that you have the off ice. And then I try to simulate two sessions. And for, so for the first session, let's say they'll do 30 minutes off ice jumping and 30 minutes spin work, doing the entrances, doing um, a spin positions. And then on the second session, try to simulate a session as much as possible so they will do exactly what they do on a session, but just on the floor. So usually we start out with 15 minutes exercises and then jump, do the jump reps. And um, that's basically the outline and then imagery before they go to sleep in the evening. Awesome. And then I have to adjust it a little bit for anybody that has maybe an injury, they can't do as much pounding but we go from there. Uh, as far as classes, that's what they do on their own. As far as classes, they get two off ice jump classes, 30 minutes each. They do one core workout and one stretch workout, which they can do for the rest of the week. And then Mondays is sometimes I'm, I'm Regan is coming on on Monday. So Monday's talking with me and having special guests come on. Awesome. Uh, we did have a question come in. Uh, will you continue to do this for the duration of the lockdown or will you be giving the skaters a break at some point? Uh, mine had a break initially. Uh, we had ice until the 15th of March and then uh, we started, I think, the beginning of April. 
Um, so they sort of had their two week break because I was hopeful that we would be back on the ice by the end of April. So I, that's, that was their break. So they're rolling into what we hope will be the competitive season now. Uh, same thing with me when this all basically happened it was leading it was almost break time anyways and so just to get this all organized and everything then that that did become their break because we were we were heading right there towards their break mm -hmm. uh, are you using or either of you using many pre-recorded um workout videos with your skaters or are you finding that the um in-person ones are more engaging and the kids are preferring that? Uh, for me, I'm not. Um, the workouts that they're doing are similar to what they were doing before. So I have Roman actually doing a lot of those classes because it helps him because he has to do his stretch, he has to do his core. So he does it with them as I oversee it. And so that gives him a little bit of motivation because he has those times of those classes and uh, he can keep uh, teaching. But it is exercises that they are used to doing. And so they're able to do it also on their own and continue. But um, I, I have thought about it just to, just to do something different, but I've gone more in the direction of getting, I'm getting Elaine to come on and do a core workout so it's a little bit different and then a Q&A afterwards. So for me, it's been just mostly live stuff. Live. <laughs> live, yeah, the new live. I did it. Yeah. Yeah. And then I figured out how to use Zoom and then I started doing them live. And the kids said they preferred the live interaction um, just because they got feedback. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had a question come in, and this is sort of touching on what we're discussing now. So do you, do either of you have specialists that you have come in, like a yoga teacher or a dance teacher or anything like that, to teach any of your classes, or are you doing most of it yourself? Um, I'm doing a lot of it, but I'm definitely relying on specialists as well, dance teachers, yoga instructors, other super qualified coaches that are doing jump classes for me and yeah it's great awesome um i have uh like a team of coaches so i i do have somebody that uh sort of specialized in the off ice jumping class so i i can oversee that um so mostly i would say mostly just um our team is doing for the majority, it's our team doing it. Nice. Um, are you guys setting goals with your skaters? So, you know, maybe the goal is a flexibility goal. Um, Allison, I know when we talked over the last couple of days, you were talking about the goal of improvement, right? Um, how do you set goals to keep the skaters sort of engaged yeah. in what their planning is? Uh, so I was lucky that I got um, an excellent ballet instructor to start working with them. Um, but a few of my skaters were pretty timid about starting ballet for the very first time on a Zoom call um, that their friends and uh, mm -hmm. that I would be in. Um, and so I just said to them right off the bat, like, the goal is that you are not um, Barishnikov by the end of the lockdown. You just want to improve wherever you started. Um, and that's, I mean, that's a very like yogi kind of thing to say. I know that sounds crazy, but they've all kind of done it and they've b been able to embrace looking silly and trying new things and um, kind of putting themselves out there on a camera right which is difficult it's difficult for all of us but they're they're doing it just with that goal of improvement absolutely we know what an adjustment it is for us as adults to sit in front of a screen now and watch yourself on a zoom right so you can imagine how the kids feel for sure yeah. absolutely yeah tracy the younger ones i give them challenges so they like try to hold a spiral for 30 seconds. They do, um, what are their other challenges? Uh, like an axle on the floor if they're little ones. Um, 
they get um, different, like they're usually physical challenges. Like, can I do five push ups in a row on my toes and that kind of stuff? So, um, that's those have been sort of their goals that they've been trying to hit. But the older ones, they're just trying to get better and better at the things that Tracy was talking about. Like, this is a time to really improve on the things that we don't have time to train throughout the year. So go for it. And Tracy, goal setting with your skaters, the goals would be different, but uh, have, have you guys been setting, you know, flexibility goals or dance goals or anything like that? Yeah, I, I think that's that's a tough thing because if you if you go into the rink every day, um, you you're there and your your goal is to land this jump or to right. make this spin better or mm -hmm. to do a clean run through or you know there's so we're so goal sort of set and you you have your goals for that day and then you have your goals for the week and then you have your goals for the month and then you have the goals for the year and with the unknown. I find that that really difficult um, mm -hmm. for more so I'm talking the higher end. That's that's tough, right? So basically we just say like listen, um, there are things like like really there are things that we are not at the higher end able to do when you're in full-time training because you're just too sore the next day um, to actually train correctly. So all those things that like like a, a hard ballet class, right? Um, you can actually train off the ice harder. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just basically saying, hey, like we can really do this great off ice program right now that we might not necessarily be able to do when we're balancing skating with it. So let's take advantage of this. Absolutely. The little ones, I always oversee the classes. So when I go on to the class, I will ask them, um, I would like to, to know, is there one thing you want to show me? And, that, and each time they show me something different that they've worked on and that's improved. And so they get really excited. I mean, some of them show me, I don't know, some waltz jump like this, you know, and then, <laughs> I, but it's, it keeps them going and yep. they're, they're happy to show their little move. Yep, awesome. Uh, we are getting some questions from coaches about uh, costs for the sessions. Um, I'm just going to comment on that. So just just like with coaching um, rates and fees, it always varies depending on the coach, the geographic area, that sort of thing. Um, so I think that you know some of the concerns that the coaches are expressing in the chat is just that you know with with um, parents being laid off um, and not necessarily working, you know finances are definitely a concern. Um, I think one way we could possibly get around this, and Allison and Tracy, you guys can jump in uh, with any um, suggestions you have, but a lot of these Zoom classes are done in a group, right? Especially for the lower levels. So that's one way um, of keeping the cost of something like this down for the skaters. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit different, I think, for sure, with the um, more elite level athletes. Um, Allison, do you have any comments on that for your, some of your star skaters? Um, for the younger level, I don't have any classes that um, cost them more than $5. Um, and those are the ones that cover the cost of other coaches being on. So they're in a big enough group. I'm lucky that the cost is low for them. Um, and I see them three times a week. And then I give them homework to do on the other days. So, yeah, their maximum would be $15. A, a week um yeah and the yeah. the elite piece that varies depending on what other um coaches that they've had the opportunity to engage with and um what other uh, dance instructors or yoga people are involved as well so i don't I don't really know where their total is at yet but yeah and i think it's um, a little bit different yeah, it, like i said can, for them yeah. as well yeah. 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 Tracy, have you had any challenges with that? As of now, um, all of these classes that I've organized, we haven't charged anything. Mm -hmm. And we've just said to help our parents and help everybody through these times mm -hmm. for the moment. When I emailed, I said, we will be offering this free of charge. Um, 
it's just something that uh, we have groups and it, it doesn't really take that much time out to tell you honestly i've got 45 skaters and you know i i might have to oversee an hour an hour and a half each day and so i think that um everybody's different it's just when i started this this is this is what i decided and the people that were doing it with me um they were in agreement so that was just our choice just yeah. to, to help them out at this time and keep them engaged and want to come back when when the ice is available that's the important piece yeah for sure um okay so I'm just going to, um, because some of these questions just have to do with what we are speaking about. So it, are any of your clubs, so Allison is your, is your actual club or um, Tracy is, is YRSA, um, are they doing anything for the skaters or are you finding that this is more coach driven? Definitely coach driven. Okay. Um, I am the director of the Brandt Club. So the those classes are open to all of the skaters in the club. And some days there's more attendance than others. I chalk that up to either they're excited to do the yoga or they are busy with school. And I don't worry about um, attendance that much, but they've been quite full, so. Awesome. Yeah. Good. And we did have another question about, um, and I can just answer this question. So any thoughts uh, about goals and strategies for when rinks open back up? So we're actually going to do an entire webinar on goals and strategies for how to get the skaters back on the ice safely um, and effectively and efficiently. Uh, so there will be a webinar on that if anybody is wondering about tools to uh, get your skaters back on the ice. Um, so I think I wanted to touch on one more part um, for coaches specifically, so not necessarily for their skaters, but for coaches. So Allison and Tracy, can you guys comment on a few different things coaches can do for themselves right now? So uh, it's a difficult time for everybody, for sure, but there might be some, you know, some self-care or some other things that they can do. We talked a little bit about music research, that sort of thing. So Allison, do you want to start? Did you want to talk about anything maybe coaches can do for themselves? Sorry, you sorry. broke up for a split second there. Oh, sorry. So we were talking about coaches and what they can do for themselves right now. So <laughs> pour yourself a glass of wine. And, <laughs> um, yeah. uh, well, I think everybody's just trying to be focused on being healthy um, and like mentally able to help out all of our all of our skaters, all of our skating community. So being able to stay um, feeling productive. I know for me, this is not a um, at all a typical day for me. So having time to cut for myself, just so I know that when we are ready to go, I have. Um, some things in the computer ready to have them listen to, doing some scheduling um, in the dream state that we might be back on the ice uh, in May and then <laughs> just pushing it back. So I think just um, yeah, having a nice glass of wine, a good meal and trying to just breathe and take everything as it comes. Absolutely. Tracy, what about yourself? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's tough for all of us coaches also. And um, you know how the skaters have a few days that are really good and they get down. I find it, the same thing is with me. It's, you know, I can go a, a, a span of time and then I just wake up and I'm like, ah, it, it's just such a tough day, right? So yeah. I think really working on ourselves mentally physically being prepared because it is going to be um it's it's going to be a challenge to have your students get on that ice and to be able to gradually build them up we're going to be working during that time so just really mentally physically uh staying healthy uh doing 
doing things what for me i mean i was always so busy and finding something that you wanted to do and whether it be a hobby uh for me i got like a camera a year ago for my birthday and i had never picked it up and so i'm going for walks i'm doing photography um i'm reading a lot and um just not be so hard on yourself if you do feel not so motivated one day um and just keep pushing through and um you know it's it's a tough time for all of us and it's skaters and coaches and i think coaches really have to take care of themselves so that we're ready to help those athletes through absolutely and to echo your point tracy when you guys do get back on the ice it's going to be busy uh, right. So this is a, uh, this is a good opportunity to just maybe breathe for a moment before that happens, because it, uh, it'll be full steam ahead when we're back on the ice. Um, so I'm going to open up to, we still have a couple questions coming in, which I'll go through, but if anybody has any questions, we will open up the floor for some questions for Allison and Tracy. Um, so there, you know, Somebody is saying, you know, keeping a schedule for yourself right now is helpful. Absolutely. Um, staying in touch with your students, parents, and your friends. Feel free to enjoy the time you have off guilt-free. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so if there are any questions, we, uh, you can um, type them in the chat box and we will see them here. Uh, somebody is asking how they can get in touch with specialist coaches. Uh, do you guys have any suggestions on the best way to reach different types of specialty specialists who might be able to help their students out? Um, that is a great question because honestly, I have reached out to all of my coaching friends and um, dance instructors that I know from the community. Um, so that wouldn't really help them to know like that person's email address or something yeah. because they're not yeah. available. Yeah. Um, but yeah, certainly there's, I think there's a lot of stuff on Facebook and Instagram. Um, the Open Ice Live um, chat that the ISU broadcast um, last week certainly showed a lot of possibilities. Um, we get really great links from Skate Canada and from Skate Ontario um, with uh, our CSI uh, staff and their recommendations for dry land training. Um, same with uh, the ISU now has um, stuff posted to their page with workouts. And uh, I believe there's a mental training one on that one as well. Um, but I'll put some thought into it and I can send yeah. links maybe for you. Yeah, absolutely. And someone commented, you know, uh, Dave had said not all coaches have the same connections and networks that some of the competitive coaches do. Right. But even we as a section, we could put together a list of contacts, right? That's what that, I was thinking. That's perfect. That would yeah. be excellent. Like if it comes from Skate Ontario and yep. you, you're connecting with us and coaches and, you know, you get a list and that would be perfect. Yeah, I think we will uh, we'll look into doing that for sure. So we can look into putting together a list of contacts that uh, all coaches can use uh, for sure. Um, okay, I just got to scroll up because it's coming in quickly now. Um, so as far as our September to March skaters, so we did have a couple, uh, a couple questions about our September to March skaters. So those skaters would likely be on a break now anyways. Uh, so they would be off. But I, I still feel it is important to stay engaged with those skaters. I'm sure a lot of them have questions. Are they going to be getting back, getting back on the ice in September? What's going to happen? I think it's important to stay engaged with those skaters as well. Maybe it's a weekly check-in or a bi-weekly check-in. Allison and Tracy, do you have anything about our September to March skaters? Um, they've been joining in with the um, star skaters that on my weekly, um, or actually three times a week classes. So oh, awesome. um, 
Yeah, a few of them are actually in Florida um, with uh, their dads are golfers. <laughs> and so they are doing lockdown in Florida right now, but they don't usually skate in the summer, but they're jumping in on the calls um, to work away at their skating skills while they can and while they have access to um, that community. Uh, I think sometimes they don't um, skate in the summer either because they their community doesn't have ice in the summer or they get engaged in soccer and uh, baseball and other sports. But right now, um, the team sports are going to be suffering the most um, because they won't be allowed to connect with more than 10 or 15 or whoever knows how many people they're eventually going to allow to stay together. Uh, but we're lucky that we're an individual sport. So for the most part, um, so they, they could be um, practicing skating through this season if we do open up again. Right. So I think those kids are starting. Yeah, and it's a fun new thing for maybe skaters who skated from September to March maybe didn't do this sort of thing, but now they can. Their the schedules are different. They're not in school all day. So this may be a, um, a great way to engage the skaters who only skated September to March. They can participate in this sort of stuff, um, kind of keep their interest going. Um, clarify any legal issues around sending pre-recorded videos. So I just want to comment that anything pre-recorded is not covered by the State Canada Insurance. Um, it's not to say that you cannot share those Skate Canada or ISU pre-recorded links or any other pre-recorded links. Uh, it's just not covered by, you wouldn't be covered as a coach if anything happened to the skater while they were participating in a pre-recorded link. Um, that's always been the case. It's just kind of come up now because it's happening so um, more often, but Skate Canada has a bunch of pre-recorded videos and those were never covered by the Skate Canada insurance. So, we really want to encourage coaches to ensure that parents, the skaters' parents, are aware of this. Um, and yeah, so hopefully that answers that question. Um, and that's a great, that's a good point too. Is uh, Chris maybe suggested you know you as a coach could watch the videos yeah. uh, to get ideas of classes you can do for for your own skaters. So that's an awesome idea. Yep. I did, I, I also had my skaters sign a waiver, an injury waiver, um, just as an extra thing that if they are injured, that um, it's at no fault of ours. And that, so I, I had something drawn up and the parents did sign it. That's, I know that's not to do with putting a video on, but just, I'm saying in general, I'm just saying this is, I, I this is what, I decided that I wanted. So um, mm -hmm. I did drop a waiver. All the parents um, signed it. And then in every class, I always have two coaches in the class. And generally, the, the biggest class that I ever run is like 12 kids, I think. Awesome. Um, okay, so we still do have questions coming in. Um, but we it's almost 8.30. So we are going to wrap up. Um, any questions that did not get answered, uh, we will get answers for you. This is a little bit different because these, these questions might be specifically to um, Allison and Tracy and we'll get answers from them for you guys, um, maybe by email. So I, I, Tracy, I'm gonna ask, so Derek is actually on, on the call and he mentioned, um, was the waiver reviewed by legal and our insurance counsel? Um, no. So Skate Canada, Skate Canada has said that it, unless it's um, unless there is a lawyer on it, um, that it may not be a legal document. So just something to keep in mind for anyone. I basically, because I really like Ravi was helping me out a lot with this, and yeah. he he had a waiver drawn up after the first couple of weeks of because it just like went crazy with him right and yeah. so he basically sent me his waiver and I changed it a little bit and and got the signatures yep 
Awesome. I think it's just, I mean, legally, it's also for me just having a piece of paper that the parents, I mean, usually the parents aren't going to do anything, but they understand right. that, that they are at risk. They're at home. And if injury does happen, like it could yeah. happen. Right. It's awareness for the parents as well. I think, I think that's basically it. Absolutely. So um, it, it, that's, that was just, the direction I went so yeah. that they yeah. understand, you know what, they're, that we're not with them. They're in their own living room. And right. So. Yeah. Great awareness for the parents for sure. Um, okay. So more webinars, we're getting questions about the next webinar. We are working on possibly something in two weeks time, but there will be more information soon. Um, so I want to, I want to thank Allison and Tracy so much for your time. We've been chatting, you know, a couple times over the last couple of days. Uh, you guys have amazing ideas and so great for our coaching community to get to chat with you guys uh, tonight and hear all of your ideas. So thank you guys so much for joining yeah, it was us. It was a pleasure. It thank was you fun. guys. Yes. Thank you. And thank you to all of our coaches for joining us today. Again, we had uh, almost 300 coaches registered for this webinar. So, um, we love getting together with you guys and uh, connecting this way during this time. Any, um, we'll send out a survey again. Thanks to everyone who completed the survey last time. We'll send out another one. Any ideas you have for webinars, please make sure you're getting them to us. Uh, and we will do our best to uh, give you guys as much information as possible. So thank you and thank you. stay safe yeah. and healthy, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Allison. Thanks, Thank Tracy. You. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. Bye, Allison. Thank, Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.